Well, the long-awaited sequel to something that absolutely nobody wanted, Rebel Moon 2 has finally dropped. And this was too much for someone like me to stomach, and I'm an absolute masochist who enjoys bad films. But unlike part one, which if I were to be a little generous, had a few moments that were so bad that it actually became genuinely entertaining to watch. Part two, on the other hand, was just shockingly terrible. It took all the problems present in part one and refined it down to its purest form. This film was downright miserable to watch. Honestly, everyone that had a hand in not only making the movie, but greenlighting it, should be tried for crimes against humanity. And before you go writing in the comment section that that's a little excessive, this sick freak right here, who probably has some unresolved issues when it comes to using unnecessary special effects, decided to add slow-mos to a farming montage. Like, who does that? And the movie's obviously not bad because of one stupid moment. Albeit, that stupid moment felt like an eternity to watch. It was so awful, my dad literally fell asleep during it, and I couldn't even blame him. On the contrary, I envied him. But like I said, this isn't the main reason why this movie failed. There's a laundry list of problems, and if I had to choose one major reason why this movie just doesn't work, it's because of the characters. I can't begin to describe to you how bland and one-dimensional these characters are. I could count on one hand the few scenes that were dedicated to character development, and most of them fucking sucked. It is the most rigid, unnatural, formulaic dialogue exchanges you will ever see. One of the worst scenes in Rebel Moon Part 2, which don't worry, there's no spoilers, but in this scene, we see our entire cast of characters sitting around at a table and one by one go around revealing something about their past past. And I shit you not, it literally feels like watching a support group or a bunch of kids on the first day of high school forced to say one thing about themselves. Now, I'm a dipshit on the internet so take this with a grain of salt, but whenever you want to tell the audience something about the world, the plot, the characters, whatever, you want to convey the information in a meaningful and interesting way. You don't want to just give us an exposition dump because then no one will give a damn and there will be no connection made. This is why no one as far as I know from the people I talked about this movie with, actually likes anyone. Even when the movie tries to make them appear to have an unbreakable bond slash friendship that they're willing to die for one another and it just doesn't make any sense. I'm just sitting here thinking, was there even one scene of them just chilling and talking to one another, not accounting for the forced flashbacks we were given? The answer to that, by the way, is no, ladies and gentlemen. So I think you get the point. The characters are beyond fucking flat and one-dimensional. But what about the action in the latter half of this film? Well, it was alright, I guess. Besides Zack Snyder's weird fetish with unnecessary slow-mos that takes something as cool as people fighting with laser swords and makes it look absolutely sluggish and boring. But the real problem with the fights is the fact that it lacks any tension, and that mainly directs right back to the characters. Since you don't have any connection or interest in any of them, you really don't care one way or another how this will all end up. The whole planet could have gotten nuked and I would have just shrugged my shoulders and just said, well, that sucks. And speaking of the planets, one of the biggest downsides to part two in comparison to part one is that since it takes place on a wheat farm, there's nothing really interesting to look at. You could say what you want about the first film, but there were some actual breathtaking set pieces that made the planets look cool. And besides one flashback where we see a world of griffins attacking spaceships, which yeah, that's pretty fucking badass. Rebel Moon Part 2's setting is just bland. And without getting into spoilers, the ending of this movie sets itself up for a part three. Now, I don't know if they're gonna get another movie, but it's not out of the realm of possibility solely because of hate viewers. But I'm still leaning towards Netflix not picking this up. But I won't lie to you, there is a part of me, a sick, twisted part of me, that kind of wants to see how bad this gets. Is it even possible that this franchise could get any worse? But all in all, if it's not abundantly clear by now, Rebel Moon Part 2 sucks. There's pretty much no reason to watch this, it's not even a fun bad movie. All this is is just a bunch of wasted time. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed, consider liking, subscribing, and comment below what I should do next. I'll do animes, shows, movies, games, whatever. But again, thank you so much for watching.